All right, thank you very much. Um, <laughs> uh, but you can share your screen, right? Yeah, yeah, I'll do that in a bit. I just okay. want to like introduce myself. And All right, cool. Uh, hi everyone, my name is Rosario. Wait, 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 sorry, sorry. Another thing. Um, Lisa, are you recording this? Don't worry, I am. I'm recording it. Oh, okay, cool. All right. Great. Uh, so, hi everyone. Uh, my name is Rosario Fernandez. Um, I am a Google Developer Expert for Firebase. Uh, I am from Maputo, which is a city in Mozambique. Um, I'm also orga an organizer for our local PGP group. Um, other than those, what can I say? I work mostly as an Android developer. Um, and I really enjoy contributing to open source. And on my free time, I do enjoy playing games, watching movies and TV shows. So if you want to talk about that, I'm uh, open to that. I'll, I'll, I'll leave my, my Twitter handle here on the chat. So if you guys want to discuss anything that we didn't have a chance to discuss here in this meetup, or if you want to talk about anything else that you would like uh, about Android, Firebase, even movies or video games, I'm, I'm always open for that. So uh, feel free to reach out on Twitter. I left my Twitter handle in there. And today we're gonna be talking about uh, Jetpack Compose and Firebase. So I'll be introducing you guys to both of those tools. Um, like I was saying, I was mentioning in the beginning, this is supposed to be like a totally introduction so even if you have no prior experience with android you'll probably learn a thing or two um, of course i won't be installing those tools i won't be here installing android studio but if you want to do that you can go ahead and check out the android studio website i would just like assume that you you already have the tool installed and you're trying to get started with compose and firebase so I was, met, I was saying in the beginning that uh, I didn't prepare any slides, mostly because I want this to be like uh, a conversation and like a walk through all the steps to get started with Jetpack Compose and then later adding Firebase to it. Um, I know we only have like an hour for that, but uh, I'm hoping that that would be enough for us to like get a, a pretty simple app working uh, pretty quick. Um, so if you guys have any questions or any comments or anything, uh, feel free to leave it on the chat and then we, we can discuss or we can talk about it. Um, so to get started with this, I'll just share my screen. Um, I'll select the entire screen. So I think you can see my screen now, right? Yes. yes. Perfect. Um, so here I have uh, Android Studio. Um, before, before we get started on the practical thing, uh, I wonder is any, is everyone like uh, aware of what uh, of what Jetpack Compose is? Is everyone experienced with Android? Please uh, leave a message on the chat. Tell me, uh, have you done any work on Android before? Is it something that you're interested in, in starting on? Like, what's what's your level of, of knowledge about uh, Android in general? While you wait, uh, well, uh, maybe maybe you can get us started. Like, are you are you a beginner? Have you ever done any work on Android? Do you use it frequently? Is it something that scares you? so much pressure on me my guy <laughs> yeah um but um i haven't worked with um android um really so i'm like very zero beginner so yeah that's me right that's yeah. yes, Sebo is also a beginner Ooh, yeah let's pressure me simon any any android work you've done well i i did try installing it once then i tried running it then my whole PC shut down. So that's that's the Android, all my Android experience. I, <laughs> I, know. I saw it almost run. <laughs> I 
know, I know Android can be a little, a little tough on, on, on some computers. Sometimes Android Studio can be heavy, just like Chrome, on, and it can like eat all your RAM. But that's fine. <laughs> uh, I think you, you, you'll get a chance to try again. Okay, so <laughs> so most of you are beginners, so just try to introduce like what is Jetpack Compose in general. Um, so in the earlier uh, Android days, like when we got started with uh, developing Android apps, um, the way that we built like um, the user interfaces would be through uh, a specific markup language, which is XML. So some people usually refer to this as Android XML, which means you you just uh, be you, you actually have an editor on Android Studio that you can like just drag and drop uh, components such as buttons, text fields, um, lists, and anything else you, you want to add to your user interface, you, you would be able to do that through a, a drag and drop tool. But what changed is that they introduced this tool called Jetpack Compose, which is called like a declarative UI for for Android. So what changes is the fact that uh, you no longer have the drag and drop tool, but instead you're like writing all your user interface on code. And sometimes, or maybe if I say most of the times, you're actually like nesting one, one component inside the other and like you're creating like this design your, your user interface, which is totally what we're gonna see um, today. So that, that, that's a basic uh, introduction for what uh, Jetpack Compose is. It's basically uh, a tool for you to, to design your UIs in a declarative, which is what they call declarative way. So I think in practice you'll be able to understand that better. Um, I'll start by telling you about uh, what we're gonna see today. Today we're gonna try to build an app, a very simple app, uh, which basically displays a list of books, and from those books, like you'll be able to see uh, the title of the book, the author of the book, and the publication year, and then from from this list, you could maybe add more more uh, books to the list, and this is supposed to be synchronized with uh, a database somewhere on the cloud. And our choice for this database uh, is going to be Firebase, uh, because, like I mentioned at the beginning, uh, I'm a, a developer actually for Firebase, so that's really the point of what I wanted to, to show you guys. Um, so I'll start by creating a project and a small requirement in order to use Jetpack Compose is that you need to use uh, this specific version of Android Studio, it has to be Active Box or later version. Um, so starting from Active Box you get uh, support for, for Jetpack Compose. So I'll start by creating a project. I'll um, just click here on new project. It shows me this screen to choose uh, what, what the first screen of the app should look like. There are many options, but I'll choose empty Compose activity, which tells Android Studio that I want to use Jetpack Compose for this. If you choose any of the other ones, it's going to be using the old layout, so the X Android XML layout that I mentioned before, uh, that's what you're gonna get here with, with this drag and drop tool. So instead, I wanna try uh, Jetpack Compose. So I click on next, and I'm supposed to give a name to my application. I'll call it, let's say, Shop Control, I've actually been playing with this name a lot. Um, they require a package name and where to store that project. Um, because I already have tried this with a shelf control, I just add a two here. Only because I have like a different project with the same name, but uh, you guys probably 
the bounce here, we don't really need to, to do that. Um, I think the minimum SDK is fine. It's going to run from Android 6.0 and onboard. It's quite fine. I'll just hit finish. And this is going to create a project for me. Still loading, as I can see the load. Okay, so it's loading. And yeah, Android Studio can be quite slow sometimes. Uh, no wonder most most computers like Simon simply can't take it. It's it's a bit heavy. Uh, I think the engineers are trying to improve at every version. Like usually we do see improvements, but it doesn't really make us that happy, that excited about it. Uh, I really think that's uh, fine at some point. We understand, we're all developers here. So while it loads, uh, we can see here that it basically created a class for us. This is a Cartium class, and it extends component activity. So every screen, every screen in Android is usually called uh, activity. We can also have something else which is called fragments, but I'll try not to use that today so that it doesn't make your, your lives too complicated. We'll just start with activities, and if you're if you're curious about fragments and anything else that that is possible to do in Android, feel free to research by yourself. And if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me on Twitter. Uh, I left my handle in the chat in the beginning. Um, and on this class, uh, we can see a lot of stuff here. There's a lot of code that was already created for us. Um, you can start with this uh, onCreate method that was declared here. Basically, whatever is written on onCreate is what's gonna be called once this screen shows up. So it's like uh, once the, the screen is shown to the user, do everything that is inside uh, onCreate. So let's see what's inside onCreate. Inside onCreate, we have this method which says set content, basically telling us what content it should be displayed on the screen. Has a theme specified, so it actually got the name from my from my uh, app name. I call my app shelf control. So it's shelf control theme because it got it on the app name. And then we have a surface which like it says here on the comments container for everything else that we're gonna be showing on screen and then we have this uh, greeting and here is the part where we start with the real get back on full stuff um, greeting is what we call a composable so a composable is basically like uh, a function it's it's mostly like a component of your uh, user interface and when using Jetpack Compose uh, most of those uh, components are usually functions instead of, of class um, if you ask me why I don't really know why but for some reason they decided that functions were a better way to deal with uh, composals or components or to build UIs so yeah uh, we have this composable that was declared here here called uh, greeting and basically what greeting returns is a text um, a text is it's just a text like it's supposed to show you uh, this text on screen we have hello and whatever name we are getting as an argument to, to this function so in this case we are calling greeting with the name and 
Android, so on screen you see you see saying hello uh, Android. And one fun thing about Compose is that like even though we are writing the whole, the whole UI uh, in code, we can actually declare some some content uh, with the preview annotation. So having a preview annotation means that we want to see this uh, this function that we're using or this component that we are using on Android Studio itself. So in order to do that, we can actually click here on split and this should show us a preview of what we are supposed to see on screen. Let's wait while it loads. Okay, let's try to build it. So I was saying in the beginning that like uh, this is mostly aimed at beginners, so whatever error that that you you you'll be getting, I'm expecting to be getting it too. So in case this doesn't build, that's totally fine. Uh, <laughs> uh, you'll probably get it too. If I make any mistakes, it's probably the same mistakes that you're making. So I hope you can solve it all. Okay, so while it builds, uh, let me just show you a bit of the structure in case you didn't know what the structure for Android app. Uh, when, you, when you use Jetpack Compose, it's a bit different uh, because Jetpack Compose is, I think it's only supported in Kotlin. I know some people have tried to use it with Java, but uh, the experience is totally different. Many, some, some, some functions are not really supported, so. Uh, Kotlin is, is usually the default uh, language if you're building an app with Jetpack Compose. Okay, I think it builds. As you can see here, uh, the only thing that we're showing is this greeting, and we're calling it uh, Android. So, this is basically all that's going to be shown on screen. Um, like I said, we're building, we'll be building an app. To, to show books, a list of books, and I think we can use this screen to actually show it. Um, I'll just try to run this, this code on my phone. I really hope it runs. It should run, right? I mean, it's, it's a project uh, recently created, but I hope it's fast and we can really spend my time. So while it builds, I'll create uh, a model, a model class for for the books that we'll be showing. Um, let's create a new class here, and I'm going to and like I said in the beginning about each book we want to show the title so uh, here uh, title which is um, I'll write we want to know the author for that book so I'll write this here it's also a string and we want to know the year when it was published so I'll declare that as an integer and um, the thing is, when using Firebase, you actually need to specify some default values for those fields. So I'll be giving it empty strings as default values. This helps Firebase uh, read it uh, easily. This makes it easier to, to read from, from, from Firebase. Um, I created the book class. It's a little bit slow because it's trying to run the app. Um, 
here on our screen I will declare uh, updates list. Training a book here with the title uh, Book One. The author is Anto. The year Taking a while to run, so while it runs, I'll just like try and go forward. Uh, I'll create uh, a composable to actually display the data for each book. So we could say that it's a book part, and it will save as a parameter a book. I see some messages there. Frederico says John Doe is a classic. Yes, indeed. <laughs> right now, I'm just trying to show that it's getting less than it's close to us now. Okay, great. As you can see, after running this, this app, uh, all we see on screen is Hello Android for the message that we, we specified in there so this is basically your, your hello world in the, in the android world um, let's try to like instead of like showing only this let's try to, to show a list of extra books Okay, so for each book, I'm trying to create uh, like a card in its place, and this card should contain all all the data, so the title, the author, and the the year when it was published. So I'll just say I want to show some text. There's one more thing I forgot to mention. Like if you if you are just if we are just declaring like text, they they might just simply like overlap. So we'll be seeing like one text on top of the other, and we don't really want that because that's not gonna be readable at all. So we, what we really want is like for the text to be like stacked uh, on top. So in order to do that. We, we actually have a composable called columns, so we're going to be using columns here. And I'll put all the text slightly. And we have a new part, I think I forgot some filters.
So we can actually preview this by creating a preview function. So we call it So now that I created like a, a preview function, I can actually see this appointment time here to this click option in order to look. Can I just ask in the meantime, Rosario? Mm -hmm. uh, it's quite a general question, but like in terms of Kotlin, what's your experience with it and what do you like about it and what don't you like about it? Yeah, I, I really love Kotlin. Like it's, it's my favorite language for Android at the moment. Um, like it has so many functions that like Java was missing. Like for example, it has like this output has this ability to like uh, create what we call extension functions which are like which means you can like uh, you, you could have like a pre-created class so maybe you're getting a class from a library or um, some some other class that that you can freely edit it but with extension functions from Kotlin you can actually like add some functionality to, to that class um, and then you don't really need to, to extend from it or anything like that, so like it allows you to add functionality to some libraries without really messing with the library's uh, code. Um, there's also some some cool stuff for for networking and, and long running operations, and that's called uh, Kotlin coroutines. Uh, it's pretty nice for like long and intensive tasks. So yeah, I would say I would say in general, Kotlin is like a lot of fun. I really love and really enjoy the language. Um, it's it's much more satisfying than, than, than using Java for Android. Okay, so as you can see here, uh, there's a book review, and you are, you have all of the texts here. Um, they are all stacked. The other, uh, we could obviously edit this to make it a little better, or uh, maybe add some spacing. So, uh, add some spacing, and on just that tool, in order to add spacing, you need to modify your tool. So, for this part, I wanted to have some spacing around here uh, on the border. So, I just call it modify. Basically, DP is usually the unit that is used um, when creating uh, interfaces for, for Android. So, 
six loads of bread. As you can see, it added some spacing on the borders so that they can actually have loads all over it. And I think it looks a little bit better. Of course, we could improve it, improve it by maybe improving the, the size of this uh, title. SP is the unit that is usually used uh, for test on Android. Uh, let's see how it's going to look. We can also change like, the color of the text. Something else. Say gray. is the most complex one because other than padding you can also have like a lot of room so for example you might want this card to like fill all the width that is available on the screen so for people who are used to, to doing to do android with xml the fill match width is kind of equivalent to using uh, the, the match parent value which is a little bit more Okay, perfect. As you can see, the card has improved a bit. Uh, the title is, is a bit bigger because of the font size, and the, the other texts are now gray. Okay, so now we have like uh, the book card, but what we really want is a list of books. So in order to do that, in that type of case, we have a composable or lazy column. So we use basic column here and we want this to have some items and we specify what the items they are, they are books. So I'm calling this list of books and then I should specify what what's supposed to happen with each of the books. So for each book, I want to display it, right? So I'll just call the book card composable that we created here. So our book card, books. And I'll actually try to run this on my phone. And if it's all correct, we should be seeing this list of books. So we start with book one, we start with book two, with their respective authors and publication year. Let's see it's installing. Okay, there we go. As you can see, we have like um, the cards here. And it shows the list that we just uh, created here. So yeah, like uh, if you if you come from an Android background, if you used to write XML code, uh, you're probably used to creating like a recycler view, and um, then writing a recycler view adapter, and then a recycler view view holder, which is like a lot of work to simply display uh, a list of items. In that type of pose, it's just as easy as using uh, a lazy column and then specifying the items and then deciding what you want to do for each um, of, of the items. It's just that easy. Um, so, from what I'm seeing, uh, I think the time is running out. So, let's um, try and connect this list um, to, 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 to Firebase. Um, 
I'll try to like instead of having like the most static type uh, book, I'll read okay. this list from from a database, and this database is gonna be on the cloud. So this is the part where I get to introduce you to to Firebase. So in short, um, Firebase is like um, uh, 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 what we call a serverless backend platform, which means like you can create the backend for your Android app or for your any any mobile app uh, or web app or even web app um, without necessarily having a server. So it's a cloud platform where you get to like you get services like um, database. System to, to help you authenticate your users so that you can like sign them up or log in. Uh, you can even do like things like login with Google, login with Facebook, login with GitHub, like that. You can also have access to a service that allows you to like upload files from your users, so images or anything else that your users are uploading, um, and many many other services. Um, but today we're gonna be focusing on the database and we'll try to like store some books on the database and then on our Android app we'll try to like read those books and display it um, for the user. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna head over to this link which is console.firebase.google.com which is where you usually sign up for Firebase. I already have an account, so I didn't have to sign up. I'll even paste the the link here on chat. And I already created a project for it, but um, if you want, you can just right click on Add Project and go ahead and create a project. It's a pretty simple uh, wizard. It will just take you over all the steps. And once you create a project, you'll see this screen right here. So welcome to the to the Firebase console. Uh, I think this actually mixed uh, Portuguese and English uh, for my console. I think that's because of the, the settings of my account. But um, the left side should look a bit of the same. So you can see here on the left side you have a list of all the services that are, are available on Firebase. Um, the one that I want to use right now is the Firestore database. Um, that's where we're going to be storing um, our data. But before that, we can actually we, we actually need to add uh, our Android app to to, to to the project. So my project is called Chef Control. I can click here on Add. Uh, an app and I select Android and you should see uh, a screen that requires you to, to specify the package name and in order to get the package name you can just come here and you'll see uh, on our main activity it's actually listed but the best way to get it is from this file which is build.gradle and it ends with so we come over here and we have, as you can see here, specify the application ID. So we could simply copy this. Um, and let me just click over here and paste it. You can see it is This is optional, so I will ignore it for now. it and then I have this configuration file which is called Google Services that we can I download it. Okay, it's been downloaded. And then it shows me some instructions on how to add Firebase to my project. Um, so initially on the project build.gradle I have to add this line. So I'll copy it and I come over here and paste it. Now what else we got? Scroll down and they say add this line. So I'll copy it and 
this supposed to be on the app uh, Diego Trego? I'm actually using Chrome. It's supposed to be on the app Diego Trego. So I come here to the app. Uh, it's supposed to be here, but like the the syntax has changed a bit, so now it looks like this. ID and then the the ID there of the Spanta Firebase, and then also on the same file I need to add um, the Firebase platform down here under dependencies. As you can see, here is the dependencies. So this is how I know where I'm supposed to paste this added platform here and I want dependency for um, the Firestore database so I'm going to change this here to Firestore let's see if it synchronizes oh I think I forgot to paste um, the downloaded file so I downloaded this file the configuration file this is basically JSON it. This is it. I try out edit. I'm going to show you what I'm supposed to do. It's something app server. So I open this file. And this is where it should be. So this is the, the project folder, shop control. Right below it, and then the, the the configuration file should be under the app folder. Um, so yeah, so once you do that, you can click that synchronize button, and everything should work fine. I hope. Here I can continue with this. Okay, so everything is ready. So I press click OK. Um, on my database, I already had added some books, but I'll actually delete those to show you how it works. So basically, the the, the Firestore database it has uh, this. It's not. It's a NoSQL database, so you don't really get the same things that you get with um, SQL databases. So usually, for those people who are used to SQL. They have like tables, and then for each table you have like a bunch of columns, and those tables can also have like rows. Um, Firestore is totally different from that. You have uh, collections, which is kind of similar to tables, but they don't really work the same way. Um, you have documents, which is similar to rows, and you have what we, we call fields. Uh, which is a bit like columns, but not exactly. So I'll delete, I'll delete the, the collection that I have at the moment to create a new one to show you guys how it's done. So basically, I have here an empty database. I'll create a collection. Like I said, the collection is kind of like a, a table. So in this collection, I'm going to show books, so I'll call it books. And it requires me to add the first book to it. I need something to work as like a, a kind of thing what you are used to in SQL databases. And Firestore actually allows me to like generate uh, an automatic key to it or code. So this would be the, the key for that book. Um, I want it to have the same fields that I specified here on my book class. So we need a title, we need an author, we need the year. Um, I'll just call this title. And the title can be the Android. Androids. Um, the author, say cat. Um, year, we actually need to change the type for the year. It's a number instead of a string. There are more books books up here, as you can see. If I say 2021, and I say it. So we only have one book at the moment. And if I want, I can actually add an one title. So 
let's try to like um, list um, those those books on on the end of that. So in order to do that, uh, I'll create a separate class, which will be uh, a view model. So I'll So it's always good to have like a separation of UI and data or anything else that, or any calculation or anything else that goes in uh, on the background of your app. So the books view model helps with that. Uh, basically, what this this view model is gonna do is hold like um, the list of books. So I'm gonna create uh, what in that type of case we call the state. Basically, a state in Jetpack of Books is like a value that you can actually observe so that whenever it changes, you'll be aware that, it, I mean, the UI will be aware that the value changed and automatically update it. Um, if any of you is familiar with Flutter, this concept is probably um, easy for you to understand, or if you're familiar with uh, any of the Redux libraries, this is probably should only be able to like get the values and not necessarily change it. That's why we create a separate variable which is called books. We say that the state where is the state is the state which holds a list of books. And the other classes should only be able to So uh, we're gonna create a constructor, a constructor for for the view model, and basically what this constructor should do is like um, try to read all the books and store it on our state. And to do that, I'll create a Firefox query. I'll name it query, and I can call this Firebase dot Firestore, and then I can just the collection that I'm reading from, so I'm reading from books, and then in my constructor I say query dot snapshot listener. Basically, what a snapshot is, what a snapshot is, is like um, a data that is that is there on the database at the moment when we are trying to to read. Um, so here you can actually check if there's a value specified. You can try and like uh, send it over to the state. So I'll call the readable state.
Okay, so at the moment we're ignoring errors, but it does come out which one how to handle error. Um, yeah, so this should, should like try to read the add snapshot listener tries to read from the Firebase database, and then if the value is not new, then we set that to to our state. And on our main activity, we actually need to call that build model. And in order to do that, we declare here let's say build model. this one of the main things that um, I really like about Firebase is the fact that the database is real time so whenever there's a change uh, on the database it's like quickly synchronized with the Android app and whenever there's a, a change on the Android app it's also like very fast to synchronize with, with the database which, which is actually what I want to show you guys um, now so let's wait for it to to run. Let's see if there are any questions or anything. I see Caleb used to have a template for a site review adapter. That's totally fine. Everyone does that. I think even the most experienced developers used to have that. I mean, with the, the site reviews can sometimes be a bit difficult. So it's a really good change. If you have any questions, any comments, if you got lost at some point, please let me know. I'll be happy to discuss that or comment about it. Okay, you, you are now sounding a bit faint. I'm not sure if it's me. Oh, I don't know. I'm coming back here. Yeah. Can you guys hear him? Can you guys hear me? Uh, the same host? Yeah, yeah, we can hear you. Oh, okay, cool. That's my default. Yeah, no, I can hear. Great. Okay, I think the application is loaded. Let's take on my database on the side.
case and the court can use it reasonably. Simply not showing that there's no error or anything showing on screen. Um, I could probably try and like figure out what's the problem here, but uh, I see we are running out of time, so uh, instead of just like show you guys um, the other previous apps that I had created, which is like same to this one, except I, had, I went a bit further, so you might see a little difference. Can I just ask quickly, Rosario? Yes. So with Firebase, can you store anything other than like, let's say for example, text files, like can you store images and videos and all of that? Yes, yes. Like, like I was saying, like uh, Firebase provides a way for you to, um, to actually store um, any files. Uh, it's usually divided by like the services that it provides. So on the left side here, you can actually see like a list of all, all the services that Firebase provides. And right now we're using the Firebase, the Firestore database, but you can actually use something like, for example, storage. And what storage allows you to user files. So if you want your users to like, or like upload images or videos, audio or anything else that you're allowing your users to upload you can use the storage service and upload all your files to upload all your files and they'll be shown here um, on this page that i'm showing you right now um, if you want to learn more about like all, all the features that firebase is capable of you can actually head over to the documentation Firebase provides you with tools like build apps, Firebase provides tools to like easily release and monitor your apps and tools to, to help you engage with your users. So I think I think the the best way to start is through the the build tools. And here on the build tools you'll find things like um, Firestore, which is the database, you'll find the other database which I won't be talking about it today, but you can obviously read about it here in the documentation. Um, we have some other tools listed here as well. On the left side, you will see the list of all tools. So, the Firestore database is here. You have uh, a pretty nice documentation explaining you like how it works, how the Cloud Firestore works, how, how do you create data models, um, how, to, how do you read data, how do you add data, how to delete it. And it's, it's, all, it's all on the documentation. I really recommend checking it out. And for your question about the files, you can come over here to the uh, storage section and you can find things specified specific for, for Android. So for example, here you, you have a page that can help upload files, help download those files. If you're using any file metadata, how to handle like that. So yeah, Firebase really provides you like with a lot of options, but then it comes down to like what tools are you using because they provide you with like a lot of separate tools which basically can connect with each with, with each other inside um, Firebase. Okay, so I think I think I figured out um, why why my app was not showing um, anything. Actually, try to run one more time. So I'll go back to the second part. Here. <laughs> and as you can see, it actually shows. Um, the problem is that my my, my internet connection was disabled on the phone, <laughs> so that was a, a pretty pretty dumb error from my side. So yeah, this was not connected to the to, to the internet. That's why it was not showing any results. The page was just blank. But now that I connected it, you can see. Uh, we, we are getting the same the same list of images that we have here. And now for the fun part, like I said, uh, Firebase easily synchronizes your database with your application. 
So if I come over here and I want to add another group, uh, let's say file is CVPs potato. Um, the author is table. And if the year is let's say file number here. I save it, it's immediately shown uh, in here on the, on the database. So yeah, basically, like, basically this, this is uh, how you easily read from, 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 from Firebase and you can see the things, it synchronizes really, really fast. Uh, one more thing that I want to show you is like how to like add new documents to it. Um, like I said, this is a big big project. Uh, because of time, I'm just gonna show you the previous project that I had created because it already has like a uh, proper UI to to add new groups. Um, let's see So what I did was I created a separate screen to like that has like a form that we the user could could fill in all the details about the group that they that they want to to show. Um, I just I delete those groups over here. So as you can see here, there are no books being shown at the moment. I can click on the add button. Sorry, I forgot something here, which is to like decide what it does when it's clicked. Let's just say when it's clicked, it's full of book. Uh, it will be book. This project on GitHub, and then you guys can check out the tool to see if you understand it. If you don't, feel free to reach out. I'll always try to help you. Yeah, no, I think uh, you're right. Uh, because of time, I think if you can share it on GitHub, you can also tweet it, and then yeah, everyone can just go back and see it there too. Yeah, it's also really shared on GitHub and, and tweet it so that everyone can check out. So it's cool. What I'm gonna do here is basically store a new book. So I'm going to Firebase. Store store and call that collection. While it runs, um, is there any questions, any comments, anything that you guys are curious about before we finish here? Well, I think it was a, a great talk because <laughs> from the start to finish, we, we kept the same amount of viewers. So that's a, a great sign that everyone was able to follow you. So I think everyone was able to understand what you did there. And um, personally, uh, I learned quite a lot. I didn't know the whole Android world. <laughs> so yeah, I think also now I'm a bit more inquisitive about the Firebase world too, but we can definitely have another session for that. Great, I'm really, I'm really happy to know that. Thank you. Um, I'll now try to add a book here.
So as you can see, in like an hour and a few more minutes, we, we actually managed to, to create a simple app that connects to, to a cloud database and is able to like show the data and also add data um, from, from an Android app. And yeah, I think, I think that's all. Okay, yeah. No, today. I think uh, in closing, I'd like to say, Thanks a lot, Rosario. I'm not too sure if Simon and Siwelo would like to say something quickly before we close or not. No, I don't have anything to add um, on top of what you've said already, really. Um, but yeah, thanks so much, Rosario. Um, yeah, so this was quite insightful. So thank you. I should like try some on Android stuff for my my personal. Um, Hope you know this one. Yeah, I just I just hope it uh, the, the thing that ha happens to Simon doesn't happen to you where your computer just crashes. <laughs> Please don't scare me <laughs> already. Don't worry. Don't worry, I have enough RAM now. I have 16 gigs of RAM. I'm ready for it this time. <laughs> oh, so no, I think us. flex on us now. <laughs> yeah, no, I think it's I use like 15 of it. <laughs> that's good that's good <laughs> no i think it's been an awesome talk rosario thank you very much um you also got me curious a lot on firebase because i did try firebase for a while and i was wondering how can you actually write to firebase with the app and i'm glad you answered that at the very last end so i'm very satisfied about that it's been an awesome talk awesome let you know i managed to solve, solve your problems <laughs> uh, thank, you. thank you so much for having me thanks everyone No, awesome. Again, thanks to everyone who's joined us. Um, I think we can all agree that it's been an awesome talk. Yeah. You drive safe, first are you? <laughs> when you go home. Okay, Noah. Guys, um, I think that's it for today. It's been another awesome talk. Thanks, Rosario. Thanks to all our guests. Everyone, enjoy the rest of your evening. And enjoy the rest of your weekend as well. Bye, guys. Bye, guys. Thank you guys so much for coming through. <laughs>